Well, it is the day before the day before the day. You are staring at the site of Super Bowl 56. Actually, that white building there on the right of SoFi Stadium was the site of NFL honors last night. Awfully exciting. We'll get into those awards and what went down last night. But we are looking forward, of course, to Rams versus Bengals. NFC, AFC champs will do battle come 3.30 local time here in Los Angeles, right there at SoFi Stadium. We are across the street with Mike Garofolo. Matt Money Smith here for our final installment of Super Bowl today. It has been a great week. I'm sorry. I tweeted out the link. Yes. And I said, watch Super Bowl today right. here. Right? And I sent the link out. And the guy, the guy replied, he said, the Super Bowl is Sunday. No, no, no. Today <laughs> is the, part the, of the, the, show. the show. We're going to talk about That's the Super right. Bowl today, but the Super Bowl is Sunday. Is Sunday. Listen, yes. here's the most important thing, all right? <laughs> it is brought to you by Bud Light Seltzer. <laughs> Hard soda with the pop of soda. Seltzer with the pop of soda. Four classic soda flavors. The loudest flavors ever. And I see you looking at me, Orange. I see you. You think you're going to make it through the show, but I got news for you. You're not. What? See, not going to make it you, through the you show. You heard the sound effect. You're not going to need them in the last block you're of the show. Gonna We're going to create our own sound effects. Last here, part okay? of the show. Stay tuned. The last part of this segment. <laughs> We're not careful. Again, Mike Garofolo, Matt Money Smith here, and we have got a whole lot to get to. We had big news last night. NFL honors went down last night, and Aaron Rodgers was awarded his fourth MVP award. Their nice moment between he and Peyton Manning. Uh, he looked like a dirty hippie, but hey, that's his choice. You know, that's the way Aaron Rodgers rolls these days. And after accepting the award, he caught up with our Taylor Bishotti and talked about his future. Well, I got some decisions to make for sure. Uh, yesterday was like the first day that kind of felt like the off offseason uh, as I kind of had a couple things I had to do before I got back to the West Coast. And then actually I was out in Scottsdale yesterday, so I'm going to enjoy the next couple weeks. And, you know, I've had good conversations with Green Bay and I'll, you know, do some contemplating and, and make a decision here pretty quick. By the way, a very subtle, humble brag there by Aaron Rodgers. You know, I was in Scottsdale yesterday. I don't know if you're aware, but that's where the PGA Tour is what? right now. One of our producers that I shall not name, not on this show, but on another show, uh, before we went in, uh, said to me, is Rodgers going to be here? And I said, yeah, why wouldn't he be here? He's like, well, he was in Arizona earlier. I'm like, pretty sure Aaron <laughs> yes. Rodgers can make his way to L.A. Uh, in the same day from Arizona. It's all of 45 minutes on a plane yeah. to get here from Arizona. But humble brag there, but let's, let's get to it. Yeah. He says he wants to make a decision in short order, does not want to hold up free agency. The draft wants yeah. to get this thing figured out. Your thoughts? My thoughts are he's going to stay. I really believe that. And that's a hunch, and it's also based on conversations that I have had. Uh, we'll see. It comes down to Aaron Rodgers. Nobody in Green Bay really going to confirm that because they don't want to spook him, right? We know how last offseason went. But I will say this. The fact that he went up there, and I know people said, well, it sounded like he was saying his goodbye to Green Bay. No, 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 no. It didn't sound like that to me. It sounded like he was appreciative for everything that he had experienced in Green Bay and he also named the members of the front office by name Russ Mark Brian he thanked all of those guys before he thanked Matt LaFleur and his, eye, uh, his eyebrows uh, but I think that that was a <laughs> huge sign that things are better with the front office communication has been better I am not going to be shocked if we find out in the near future that Aaron Rodgers is going back to Green Bay and we won't have to worry about that drama on draft day this if year. I am to read the tea leaves you saw the earthy tones. Yeah, inspired the, by a wardrobe today. The mountainous look. <laughs> he is trying to sell the idea that the Rocky Mountains are for him. People don't think of Denver as the Wild West, <laughs> but it is. What's the mascot? The Broncos. The horse is running free, and that looks like a man that wants to mount that steed and cruise the mountains in the twilight. Cruise the mountains in the twilight of his career. Here's the one reason why I agree with you. Well, number one, because you're the information man with the information, and I'm just an idiot in a shirt with cocktails. Been wrong before. However, why would you want to join the AFC? Why do you want to go into a division with Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert in a conference with Josh Allen yeah. and Joe Burrow when in the NFC you're worried about the Rams, I guess? Who else in your division as every team is sort and, re, you know, they're retooling right now with either new head coaches or probably new quarterbacks moving forward? It just looks like if you're in your late 30s and you got a couple seasons left, obviously Tom Brady rewrote those rules, but 
what do you want to do in a conference? Why would you want to go to a conference with that much talent and that stacked of a deck when you could keep doing it here? Well, look, I think the biggest key, and, and, and that's certainly uh, part of it, but this is a confident guy, by the way, that would think I can go somewhere and, and I'm going to be the difference maker. So um, I, I do think if you look at it that way, you, we can see it from the outside. I don't think that would be a, so much of a detriment to him. That's just my, my feeling, my opinion. But I think the most important thing is the conversations were good before he left for the offseason, despite the fact that it was a disappointing ending for this team in the postseason. And the conversations during the season were good. Both guys, Brian Gutekunst, the general manager, and Aaron Rodgers making that clear. And they listened to him, right? They brought Randall Cobb back. Now, there were other guys. There was rumors that they were going to try to get Clay Matthews back. Right. He never showed up. So it's not like they said, okay, Aaron, you got carte blanche. Who do you want on the roster? It was just he wanted his input heard, and he wanted to know that everything that he had done in Green Bay warranted him that kind of respect. So the communication is better, and that's why I say I think it's going to result in Aaron Rodgers back in Green Bay, perhaps with a new contract, too. That'll be a Even though that's not really a huge factor, That'd be a nice thing to kind of uh, put the cherry on top for him. I'll just quickly button it with this. For I, I do the Broncos' offensive roster is ridiculous. The the pass catchers they have incredible. Uh, at the same time, I think what people are forgetting, Vic Fangio is the best defensive coordinator in the league. And when he leaves Denver and he has left Denver, the defense is going to slide. It's going to slide a little bit. That is just that. There's no question about that. You can't let the best defensive coordinator in the league go and not expect to see some regression. So. The idea that he would join this powerhouse with a first-time head coach, no Vic Fangio, no Von Miller now moving forward, I think that's making a lot of assumptions that he's just a drop, plug and play. This is the best team in the AFC West moving forward. But let's, you know what, let's jump off uh, into this conversation from that, and that is roster building and the way the Bengals and the Rams were built and how impressive a feat that was. Just if you were to pick one front office versus the other, or one roster construction versus the other, which one would you highlight? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm impressed with the Bengals. I mean, I know how aggressive the Rams were, and I appreciate that, and I think that more teams should be that way, and maybe they'll see the Rams and start to say, well, why hold on to all these draft picks that we don't know what they're going to uh, bear, what kind of fruit they're going to bear, and, and have more of the sure thing in making the trade. So we'll see about that. But for me, the Cincinnati Bengals, what's impressive to me is they still have that small market mentality, and by that I mean, uh, they have a really small scouting and personnel staff. It's the smallest, and it's not close. It's not even close. And for years, people have been laughing at them behind their backs on the road at the Combine and all these things. But you know what? They've always had talent. They really have. And it goes back to the Marvin Lewis era, but it goes to the Zach Taylor era, where, by the way, they showed patience. you got to have patience. They showed patience with him, as well as defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo. They believed in it. They didn't have to blow it up after uh, the first couple of years where it looked like, eh, this may not pan out. They had that confidence. But they also have the faith in those guys. You don't have to have 30 people going around the country because uh, the Bengals have the mentality of smaller is better. We trust each other. We believe each other. We got plenty of time to take looks at both college guys and pro guys. Go read a story by Albert Breer, uh, my buddy at SI.com, who wrote about it this week, and it really did highlight the way that the Bengals do things. It's different from a lot of uh, teams around the league. You don't have to have an army of guys. You can get it done. So you touched on it there at the start with the Rams and, and why I think it is so impressive. Because, look, uh, taking just standard operating procedure is the safest way to keeping your job. Well, look, this is where the experts had him ranked. All my scouting buddies had this guy ranked at this pick, so we're going to select him there. And I'm okay. It's not my fault. You know, we picked the right guy. He just didn't pan out. The idea of trading your first-round pick six years in a row runs completely contrary to what the other 31 teams think. It's not just the first-round pick. It's the cost certainty that you're not asking your owner to shell out $100 million for Jalen Ramsey, $120 million for Aaron Donald, $35 million for Matthew Stafford. And it's not just taking on those contracts. It's That's in lieu of the cost certainty of those first-round picks. Those are huge swings that other teams aren't willing to make. This is the key, and this is why it works. Because Les Snead and Sean McVay and Kevin Demoff, the team president, recognize we can do that at premium positions and we can fill our other positions in the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth round. So when they're drafting in those rounds, they're not, they're not drafting premium positions. They're drafting linebackers. They're drafting inside linemen. They're drafting safeties. And they're hitting on those picks because they don't have to get a quarterback. They don't have to get a defensive end. They don't have to get – like, that's the difference with the way the Rams did this. And it is brilliant the way they have put it together. And I've got to believe that other teams are going to take a page out of that book and recognize – 
wait a minute, you got Jalen Ramsey for a number 28 and a number 32 pick. Well, Jalen that's, Ramsey. that's also a key is when you use those picks, you're getting players back who are going to make your team better that are going to drop the value of those picks anyway. Right. So, you know, you're giving up a first round pick. You're not thinking that it's going to be a top 10 pick. Now, sometimes that happens. Seattle with the Jamal Adams trade did not expect that their team was going to be this poor this past season. So you take a little bit of a risk. But if you hit, you're not giving yeah. away a pick that in the first place By is going to necessarily net you a sure thing. I believe the, uh, the Jaguars with the Rams pick selected Travis Entienne. And then they will have a 32 pick this year from them or whatever. The year before, I think it was Caleb on chase on. So that's yeah, that's what you're talking about. Jalen Ramsey and you traded Caleb on chase on and Travis Antion for him. Or was it CJ? No, CJ Henderson, I believe, was their pick. So that I think was their pick. right. Yeah, yeah. The chase on was. So there, there you yeah. go. Yeah. That's that, when you put names to it, it starts to make a lot yep. more sense. Uh, so someone who was drafted with one of those value picks, Dak Prescott, as a matter of fact, taken in the fourth round by the Cowboys, becomes the starting quarterback, one of the best in the league and certainly in contention for the comeback player of the year. He set the Cowboys single season record. You see that for past touchdowns in 2021 with 37. They've had some pretty good quarterbacks on that team in the past. And earlier, he caught up with our David Carr on NFL Total Access. Sleep Number, man. I got one of these things. Yeah. All right. I know you're here to support Sleep Number and, and tell us a little bit about what Sleep Number that you have. Yep. You have a Sleep Number. I do have a Sleep Number. Do you have one? Yeah. Okay. What so, is it? Uh, my Sleep. The my number is 60. 60. Yeah, okay. I'm on 60. Yeah. It's not way too soft, but it's nice right it's there. It's perfect as well. I like to. Yeah. So can you get by with like six, seven hours of sleep, or do you got to sleep more than that? What's your? Um, no, I'd say six to seven is right where six I shoot for. Number. Yeah, that's right yeah. where I shoot for. Seven is great. A little bit over that. A uh, little bit too much, I, I would say. That's but weird how you feel if you sleep too much. Yeah, right? almost yeah. like a lag, almost like a jet lag. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, so I was, you had the injury in the off season, and you came back against Tampa Bay, and I remember watching that game because I had to do a show that night. And they had to ask me about it. I'm like, I'm blown away by how good this guy looked. Like, I didn't expect it because, like, you know how hard it is. Like, if you don't get the reps in the offseason and you were working sure. through trying to get the reps, trying to get full speed, but then trying to be smart about your about your injury and your recovery. So did you? when did you know that you were going to be able to play at that high level, like, early? Well, that's a good, um, great question. I'd say maybe, um, check it out Maybe April. I'd say April, May okay. was like, the, oh, I'm good to go. Like so you I, felt pretty good. I felt good in April. I mean, I was very far away at that point, but I knew yeah. that in the time that I had, the way that I'd went about my rehab process, that that I'd be fine by the time the it season looks great, came. man. So then, then you then you get a guy like CD. It takes time, right, to develop that chemistry. And you have other playmakers out there. You got Amari. You got you, know, you got Gallup. You got guys that you know, Zeke's back there. So. How, how has that development been? He's very raw, you know, so is there a little bit of that? What's the learning curve like? Like, just talk through that little process with CD. Yeah, it's a little bit, but a little bit like that. He's raw, um, but he's, he's super talented in the same part. He's smart. Even though he's raw, I mean, he's a guy that you can talk to, you communicate it, talk about it for about five minutes, and he's got it down. Next yep. time you see that coverage, that look, bam, he does exactly what you talked about. So uh, that part, he's, he's advanced, and he's, and he's ahead of it. But as you said, it's with, just with anybody, you want that those reps, that chemistry yeah. in. I mean, we've got the playmakers that we got. It's tough to get a lot with that one guy when you've got to get the ball around to other guys. A lot of pressure with wearing 88 in that building, right? A little bit. You see, yeah, there's a couple of guys that have, that have worn it pretty well, but he's, he seems like he's up to the task for sure. No, he's definitely up to the task. Yeah. He, he has high expectations for himself, so I think wearing that number just it, love it fits that. perfect. Well, I love watching you guys play this year, and then, and then fast forward, you get wild card round, you're playing in the playoffs, and then those last 13 seconds. And you've been asked about it, I'm sure, a thousand times. What do you take away from that moment? Yeah, just um, as you said, just you, you prepare so much for those situations. You go over them yeah. um, ad nauseum, to be honest. But yeah. you, 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 don't, you don't know when you're going to get them. You never and know. And so yeah. in six years, that's a situation that we've practiced over and over and over. And I got it right there yep. and didn't execute it the way it should have been executed. Um, so in hindsight, we can, I can say, yeah, I wish I would have went down faster or went down a sure, yard earlier, a, but uh, yeah. in the sense of the preparation, the things that we had been through, I thought I'd went down and thought I had enough time, but now you've just got to go back and you've got to calculate for human error. It's yeah. as simple as that. And so um, I think in those situations, now we have to add a second. We have to add a second or a second and a half to our, our calculation of yeah. being able to get that play, getting it down and having another play after that. I appreciate that candid conversation with Dak Prescott from our David Carr about that final play of the wild card loss to the San Francisco 49ers. Bad matchup for them in that game, as it was for a lot of teams at 49ers. And I like Keegan Michael Key putting uh, Dak Prescott on the spot there during his uh, was during the monologue or yes. was that, yeah, about the, the officials. So let's get to um, whether or not the Cowboys have what they need. 
Uh, they got a lot of pieces. Yeah. They got a lot of pieces. And right. they got a lot of pieces in a lot of good places. But I would say to take the next step in getting closer to a Super Bowl, which is the question that money was going to ask me before I stepped all over. That's all right. Uh, they got to get better on the back end of that defense there. They've got guys up front. Micah Parsons certainly did what he did as a rookie, which was unbelievable. You've got Demarcus Lawrence and uh, a couple of other guys. They love their defensive line. But Tra Trayvon Diggs and the plays that he makes on the back end, he's willing to take some chances. Gambler. But he needs some help behind him. And that's why you're starting to see the Cowboys connected to some safeties that are going to potentially be free agents. Quandre Diggs, Jesse Bates. Jesse Bates ain't going anywhere. Jesse Bates is going to be a Cincinnati Bengal. They're not letting him out of that building, so don't get too excited about that one. But would not be surprised if the Cowboys look to the safety position for an upgrade this offseason and say we got to get better back there, maybe even add some cornerbacks with a uh, uh, free agency or the draft, they need to get better back there. And, you know, I, to me the key is, and, and why I think, yeah, they, they're good. They kept their coordinators. These are two really good coordinators, and there's a reason why they were rumored uh, to be in the mix for so many different head coaching gigs. The fact that Kellen Moore comes back, Continuity, especially Dan Quinn and how different that defense looked with him coordinating it versus the year prior, that those two are coming back. I hate saying it, but look, I think a lot of this is on Mike McCarthy. I thought game management was an abject failure in a series of contests. They ran out of timeouts in certain places. So that's something that he can clean up. The guy's been a head coach long enough. He won a freaking Super Bowl in Green Bay. It's not like Mike McCarthy doesn't know what he's doing. It just got a little, it got away from him for whatever reason this past season. Uh, you mentioned the secondary, no doubt. And, and they have plenty of draft picks and plenty of capital to be able to try to figure that puzzle out. But to me, it's this stuff. It's game operation. That just They won 12 games. They led the league in offense. They led the league in points. They led the league in turnover differential. Like, this is a really good football team that just, I know, we can't. You just can't watch it enough. Like, that's the stuff that's got to get figured out. Yeah, got to be a little bit smoother. Uh, but, yeah, you, if you're the Cowboys and you're going into the offseason, you like what you got from a roster no standpoint doubt. in a lot of good places. When we return, uh, we have got the original Joe Cool weighing in on Joe Cool, even though it's some 35, 40 years later. <laughs> Joe Cool 2.0 has finally shown up in 2022. Joe Montana on Joe Burrow when we return here on Super Bowl Today, presented by Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda. Thanks to the power of Verizon, the Pepsi Super Bowl 56 halftime show is going ultra. Immerse yourself in a live 360 degree mobile experience with the Pepsi Super Bowl 56 halftime show Ultra Pass. Powered by Verizon 5G Ultra Wideband. Download 
the app now. There's an exclamation point there. Well, how about four-time Super Bowl champion, three-time Super Bowl MVP, quite possibly the greatest to have ever played the position were it not for Tom Brady, our dear friend. And we say that, you know, because he's Joe Montana. It just feels like somebody's uncle coming around talking to you about the way it was in the salad days. He was able to catch up with Super Bowl Live. What advice would you give Joe Burrow as he leads his Cincinnati Bengals into a Super Bowl? I mean, I think everybody wants to enjoy the moment, but I, I'll say it the best. Um, what was said to, by Bill Walsh one time when we actually went to play the uh, Chicago in Chicago is that, hey, uh, or, or you know, we're here to we're here for business. We're, you want, it's cold. Don't, don't worry about the cold. Obviously, it's not going to be cold here. No. We go into the Super Bowl, and the guys were all complaining about we had early curfews. And he said, guys, I don't know about you, but I ain't come down here to party. Let's go get our business done, and we can party after the game. And so yeah, I'm sure that just by looking at his demeanor, I don't think you have to worry about that part of it with him and worrying about, you know, the lights are too big. And, you know, you look at the, his college career and the games that he types of games he played in and, and how his success. I, he's he's doing what he needs to get done. I guarantee you he's putting in the work off the field still. Right. Yeah, he's enjoying the, the process here, but um, which can be annoying for a while, as right. you know. Right. But in most cases, you know, smart quarterback, you know, you can tell by how he plays. You can see the things that he's doing, he's, the reads that he's making. I just say, have fun. Go out there. The lights come on. It'll be fun to run onto the field for the first time. And then... It's a game. Wait, 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 wait. He said have fun. He said demeanor. I want you to show, I want to show you some clips. You see his demeanor. You see him with the cigars. You see his, the shades, the nice jewelry. He does have fun. It's not typical quarterback. Man. No, no, no. It's not, not typical. When you, I, I call it, he has stink <laughs> in his tank. What do you, what, what do you, when you see all of this right here, what are your thoughts when you see that coming from a quarterback like that? <laughs> it says, hey, I'm doing my job, and <laughs> but I, people can, I can enjoy it right now. They, they call him Joe Cool. I think it's right. kind of sacrilegious to steal your nickname. He do can do have you it. see that? He can have it. He can have it. You don't want it? Too old for it. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a cool getup. <laughs> I don't know. I just uh, had, enough of, had enough of that. He can have it. Enjoy it. Have fun as he's doing. On, on the other side, Joe, you got Matthew Stafford. First year with a new team, and he got him all the way here. Joe? You went over to Kansas City, and you pulled that thing, boy. You took Kansas City deep into that thing, man. Talk to us about the difficulties of leaving one situation that you've been in for a long time when you left San Francisco to go to Kansas City, just like Matt leaving Detroit to come to L.A. I think the toughest part of it is, is no matter how successful you've been somewhere else, there's a comfort factor that has, you have to prove to the teammates. New team There's still, no matter how they feel about you. Even coming over even, at Joe Montana, you felt like you had to prove something to Oh, definitely. Guys. Definitely did. And those guys, we had we had a good defense. And those guys, Derek Thomas and Neil Smith and those guys. <laughs> Bad boys. Yeah. And, Bad you know, they, they wanted to see that, hey, hey so you coming in here, so what? What are you going to do for us? Right. You know, what are you going to do for me now? And then, you know, as long as you get out there and play like you can play and then you don't have anything to worry about. And, and that seems to be probably a little bit light load off of Matt's back when he got here. You know, the pressure up there for winning and, um, you know, the things that were going on for him weren't exactly conducive to trying to be your best. You worried more about what everybody's talking about and why, aren't you, why don't you have success in the playoffs? Why don't you have success here? What are you, what are you doing wrong? And here you get here, you get a fresh start, and you're just going back like you're coming out of college, going to the team for the first time. And it's got to be a good feeling and a good relief uh, for him. And obviously, he's done a great job to get him here. And now he's one game away here from winning a championship. It is yeah. his first year with the Rams. Before we let you go, Micah Parsons brought us pizza. Did you bring us Guinness? No, but I gave you, I'm going to bring you a, a chance from Guinness to do something great. You get some win some money. So I'm they're, always what, with what that. they're doing is right after this game, right? What comes after this? St. Patrick's Day. So 
It'll be one of the first times in the last few years that we will all get together and celebrate. And what they want everyone to do is go on to the social. There's a, a barcode to download. Mm. They want you to do a 30 second toast to what it means to be back together nice. again. Yes. And for a chance to win tw one of 20, $50,000 uh, opportunities. So Fantastic. Mm. Great to this, hear this from Joe Montana. It blew right past President's Day, huh? Kind of did. <laughs> Going strong. <laughs> Presented by Castro Edge. You heard Andrew and, and Irv and Joe Montana allude to it, just how different Matthew Stafford has been in just his first season with the Rams. The success in the postseason, of course, helps when you have a supporting cast like they do here in Los Angeles. Uh, you see the numbers here. 72% completion, six touchdowns to just a single pick, and that passer rating of nearly 116. Thoughts on how he's going to continue to do that sort of thing in the Super Bowl. I, I think you're looking for a steady performance from Matthew Stafford, mistake-free, don't make any critical decisions that are going to uh, potentially torpedo the, your, your attempt to win a Super Bowl here. I, I don't think he's going to throw for 400 yards. I, I think maybe uh, a little south of 300 is probably where I would put it because I, I just I have a sense for how the Bengals are going to uh, play this one. But I think Odell Beckham's going to get some passes from Matthew Stafford. Cooper Cup, you know, there's going to be production there as well. Um, I, I just steady steady is the word that I'm expecting and I think if you're the Rams that's what you want so steady uh, to me was the Arizona game hey you got all this weight on your shoulders you're zero and three in the postseason well guess what we got you you're gonna throw 17 passes and we're gonna blow this team out of the water they did and after that they cut them loose they cut them loose against Tampa they cut them loose against San Francisco and I think the, the one that people keep saying this well Chikoski Tart would have intercepted that ball everything would have been different sure Everything might have been different. They were up 10, and it was in the fourth quarter, at the start of the fourth quarter. But let's not forget, Skrwanek drops. That is a touchdown pass that bounces off his head. Uh, Cooper Cup dropped a touchdown pass on the right sideline. He had his man beat in one-on-one -on -one coverage and dropped a ball. He was going to the end zone yeah. on that play. So that works both ways. He has been exceptional. In the Tampa game, they had four fumbles. It's 27 to 3, and now Matthew Stafford's in a fight for his playoff life, not because of anything he did, but because his teammates fumbled the ball four times. And there's just that super cool flat line demeanor, and that leads me to believe he's good. He got through that Arizona game, got that first playoff win, and moving forward, I think Sean McVay was like, all right, now we're good. It's all you. We Matthew had former Stafford. Jets and Dolphins quarterback Chad Pennington on our Total Access, the locker room podcast with me and Mike Robb yesterday. And Pennington said, you have no idea how hard what Matthew Stafford did against Tampa actually was to have all that momentum and only 40 seconds. And knowing if that game goes to overtime and you don't win the coin toss, that game over. is over. You're never seeing the football again. So Pennington, very impressed with what Stafford did there. Um, if you put him in a spot like that on Sunday and he's got to replicate that and do it again, that to me is going to get interesting, and I'd like to see that one. But, uh, again, I, I'm, I'm looking for steady if I'm the Rams. All right. Well, steady means uh, maybe you're able to take advantage of a defense. The Bengals' defense has been off good this postseason you see that they have shaved nearly three points off their points allowed you see nearly 10 percent off opponent completion percentage and how about that TD to interception ratio of course a lot of that helped by the three picks in the Tennessee game uh, and a passer rating 20 points below what they had in the regular season for their opponents so your thoughts on the Bengals defense. I, I don't think they're getting enough love. I yeah. really do. Uh, I've been watching this defense closely for the entire season, all the way back to week one against Minnesota when they forced a fumble in overtime. They have been making clutch play after clutch play. Yeah. We ran a whole reel of them on Good Morning Football Weekend uh, during the postseason about how clutch they have been. And Lou Anarumo, this defensive coordinator, has got his guys thinking, Late in the game, when you've got nothing left and you feel like you don't have enough left to give, you got to dig down and you got to find it. So what he did was early in the season, he was showing them some of these legendary boxing matches where these guys were just drained but slugging it out in the last round. And that mentality has gotten through to these guys because there's been games where they've struggled early. I mean, Kansas City, right? And they didn't panic and they didn't fold. And that's why I think this defense is mentally prepared for what they're going to face on Sunday on the game's biggest stage, even if they struggle early, even if they get down. They have made the plays throughout the entire season when, it, when it's mattered, not just the postseason. I mean, there were games against uh, Jacksonville, against Denver, where the defense needed to make a stop to help win the game, and they forced turnovers. Uh, Anarumo has done a fantastic job with this defense. And I think you just saw it there. You know, in that second half, Anarumo adjusted. So right here, Trey Henderson, he is one of three players
players rushing. They did that the entire second half. The way you do that is you've got a, an exceptional secondary. Look, you can have an average secondary and an exceptional front, and you get there in four, right? Or you can have a really good secondary, and that buys you time, so you can get home in three. And again, you got Patrick Mahomes doing pirouettes all over the place, and that's what that back end did. And it's it, you talked about it earlier with Duke Tobin and what they did in free agency. Bringing in Von Bell, bringing in a Wouzier, how great Jesse Bates has developed into one of the top safeties in the league. And that's the difference is when you can – there's been so much talk about this Vic Fangio and then Brandon Staley in this too high shell and how you force teams to take what's given to you, even though they, they're just itching to throw that ball down the field. They've done like a hybrid there yeah. where, you know, they, at times they're throwing everything at you. They don't blitz a lot. The difference is they get home in four or in three in many cases. And a lot of that's because the back end is so connected to the front. And, and I've talked to an offensive coach who faced the Bengals this year, and he said what they do a good job of is disguising. They do a great job of breaking tendencies. A lot of times you'll see a certain guy lined up over a tight end or a wide receiver, and you say, ah, that means it's a blitz, and then they don't blitz. Or vice versa, you think, all right, they're going to play coverage. And here comes Mike Hilton, who's been an absolute exceptional, exceptional addition for them. Steelers, I can't believe you let him go, but that's another story. Uh, but they do a great job of this. Disguising. Look, Sean McVay, yeah, he's an offensive genius, but they've got their work cut out for them against this Bengals defense. Yeah, no doubt. Wildly underrated through this whole postseason. I mean, six points in two halves. Both second halves, they allowed three in the regular season and the playoffs. When we return, Cooper Cup is your offensive player of the year for 2021. Todd Gurley was your offensive player of the year for 2017, both wearing that Rams uniform. Todd Gurley will weigh in on Cooper Cup's achievement and the Rams in the Super Bowl next. Whether he was a Viking in high school, a dog in college, or a Ram in the league, he was always the straw that stirred the offensive drink. He is a former offensive player of the year in the NFL. It is presented by Microsoft Surface. Todd Gurley joins us right now on Super Bowl today. So, Todd, let's start with that. Um, it's a huge deal to be the offensive player of the year. What was that like for you, and, and how great is it to see another Ram Cooper Cup win that award? Um, it's definitely something that you really just can't describe. Um, you know, obviously growing up being a fan, 
of the NFL and players and, and watching your idols win those type of awards and being able to have the opportunity to win that award yourself is kind of like mind boggling. So to be able to see Cooper Cup win it, um, it definitely means a lot because I've seen the hard work um, that he's put in and, and everything. He's even in there with the protection meetings with the O-line and the running backs doing stuff that, you know, receivers don't even do. So um, he's definitely a special player. Todd, I was at the Senior Bowl uh, a couple of years ago, gosh, about four or five years ago when Cooper Cup uh, was there and putting it on display for anybody who had a set of eyeballs. It was clear that this guy was a player. For you to see how he has developed, though, over the last couple of years, I mean, he is a complete weapon winning the receiving triple crown. Um, how have you uh, been impressed with what he has done over the course of his career to become, like I said, that complete receiver? I mean, it's, it's no surprise. You know, it's no surprise, all this hard work. Um, but to to do everything that he's done this season is is just crazy. It's, um, like I said, you can't even put it in words. You don't even, I mean, you know, records are meant to be broken, but like, you know, when is this going to happen again? And I think, you know, obviously looking forward, he has the opportunity to, to keep doing this. Todd, give us an idea. Um, I think so many people get excited about, you know, the passing game in, in this era of the NFL. But uh, by all accounts, Sean McVay's offense, man, it, it runs off the run. And if the run's not working, the rest of that offense certainly does not move as efficiently. Uh, what, the, the Bengals have done a great job of, of slowing down the, the opposing team's, you know, best offensive weapons. What would it mean if they're able to contain Cam Akers? Can you see this offense being one-dimensional and still being able to win a Super Bowl? Um, I think they found the, the great balance. Um, like you said, I think when you think of the Rams offense, you think of the run, but to be honest, man, um, coach McVay's done a great job of, of being able to take advantage of basically the situation in the game plan, whether it's, you know, uh, a DB being out and, and just attacking the DBs or a linebacker being out and a, a defense alignment being out and being able to, to run the ball well. So I think just, just everything like Cooper Cup has done, it's, it's just meant a lot, you know, just even from him, um, um, just from his rookie year, you know, to come back from the ACL injury, um, to, to do, the, do the things that he's done. But only you just see the preparation like literally every day, every day. Um, and he definitely works hard, you know, even just from um, playing in the games and you might give up a pick or even myself, you know, you might miss a, a block, a pass protection and being able to go to the sideline um, and use the surface on the sideline and be able to make in-game adjustments, be able to um, just just go back the next play, but also being able to leave that last play in the past. So I feel like that's just that's just always been Cooper Cup. Like it's it's literally you can ask his previous um, teammates or and and his teammates now, and then they're going to tell you the same thing. Todd Rams back in the Super Bowl here, uh, and Sean McVay has been candid about the last time he was in the Super Bowl. A little bit of a paralysis by over analysis. He had that extra week and maybe started to overthink some things. I, I gather he's learned his lesson. I mean, you're, you're confident that McVay and the Rams probably going to have uh, a better game plan this time, or a better feel for how to, to do this, right? Man, football, you, you never know with football, man, but be able to get back to the Super Bowl. I, what is this? Two times in the last four years. Yeah. Um, and then you see a you see a team like you know the Buccaneers last year, um, being able to play in their in their hometown and being able to play in the Super Bowl. So it's kind of like too good to be true not to win, you know. So it's just like it's kind of just set up for them. But I got to tell a lot of people, man, the Bengals are a great team um, and definitely not a pushover. So. I'm just looking forward to to a good game, man. You got a guy in Zach Taylor who, you know, who was under Coach McVay as well. So, um, you know, he may know a little bit of tendencies, but um, just the players that the Rams have is just is just crazy. Is there a uh, is there a text thread 
with, with all the former Georgia Bulldogs. I mean, what a year for your alma mater, winning the national yeah. championship. You got a former teammate, Sony Michelle on the Rams. You got uh, Matthew mm -hmm. Stafford, Georgia alumni. Are you close with those guys? Is there something, there's something, you know, they say once you're a Ram, you're part of the Ramley. What, and I would assume it's the same for Georgia. You have a relationship with those guys. Yeah, I mean, um, Robert Woods, great guy. Um, so just being able to stay in touch with him and, um, you know, he's not playing in the Super Bowl you know, towards ACL earlier in the season. But, you know, just being able to just stay in touch with him, keep him in good spirits. And, and obviously, Sony, man, you know, I've always been, been happy and, and proud of him and everything he's accomplished from just him, you know, playing against the Rams and, you know, could have been a Super Bowl MVP a couple of years ago. But so I, I get to see him. He usually comes over to the house about once a week and we just pretty much just just chop it up and, you know, just catch up. But yeah, man, um, definitely a great year for my dog. So I'm, I'm definitely excited about that. Right. What a heck of a year it could be. Uh, the Rams perhaps win the Super Bowl the same year. The Georgia Bulldogs finally win that national championship. Uh, Offensive Player of the Year in 2017. This year, another Ram Cooper Cup. It is the Microsoft Surface Offensive Player of the Year, and we certainly appreciate Todd Gurley taking a few minutes with us. Thanks so much, Todd. Yeah, appreciate you for having me, man. I like the setup back there. Y'all y'all looking good. I'm over here hanging out at the Microsoft Lounge. Um, you look like you're in a better great spot morning. Than us. Great morning. Yeah, great, great week in L.A. I don't know, man. Y'all got a great setup, too. So. It's all right. Come on over. Nah, I, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Thank you, Todd. I appreciate that, man. Absolutely. You. Appreciate you. Thank you. Right. Yeah. When we return, talk about young players making their mark. Joe Burrows in the Super Bowl. Justin Herbert was your rookie of the year last year and the starter in the Pro Bowl. This year, we'll hear from the stud quarterback of the Chargers next. Back here on Super Bowl today, presented by Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda. There it is, the iconic Capitol Records building. Capitol, of course, the American distribution record label for the Beatles, amongst other legendary acts. Speaking of legends, after just two years, Justin Herbert is starting to make one of himself here in Los Angeles. Your Rookie of the Year, your starter in the Pro Bowl this past season, and earlier he joined Super Bowl Live with Steve Smith and our Scott Hansen. Justin, you're getting a feel for Super Bowl week here. I know you'd rather have a practice today than media availability, but does this 
atmosphere get you even more hungry to get to one of these games well, yourself off, someday? Thanks, off, thanks for having me. Sure. You know, I'm excited to be here. And it is, you bring up a great point about that. And, um, you know, I think you can use that as motivation heading into next year. And unfortunately, we missed the playoffs. And that's the tough part about the NFL. Mm. But, you know, we're going to continue to work hard. And, and we believe in the coaching staff, the players, the front office that we have down here in Southern California. And, um, you know, I know that we'll get things figured out. Nice. Mm. Speaking about missing the playoffs, back in 2019, Pac-12 championship, <laughs> He's gonna Oregon go to versus anyway. <laughs> Utah. You knock off my Utes, and we don't get to go to the playoffs. But what I'm talking about that, why I'm talking about that is, I've been watching you play football at Oregon and now in the National Football League, and what you've been able to do thus far, back then and now, now it's been remarkable. You know, you've hit every benchmark. You're a franchise quarterback. You know, what does the what does the Los Angeles Chargers or what you need to do to stay on top? of where you guys are right now. Well, that means the world to me. You know, I really appreciate that. And, and having been a fan of you for a long time, um, oh, you know, it. it's been awesome to be able to watch uh, the game of football develop over the past couple of years. And, um, you know, it, we've had so much fun together. And obviously, it's it's not always going to go your way. And you're going to lose games. You're going to throw interceptions. Uh, but it's all about how you react and how you respond to that. And, um, you know, it's always about getting better and continuing to push the envelope of, of what you can do. And, um, you know, I think we're really close in L.A. And it's the tough part about the NFL is you're playing so many good teams like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but for us to could keep working, keep doing those things on and off the field, um, I think we got a good chance here. Let's talk about, though, your pass catchers, the guys that you have on the roster and maybe anything that you could add. You've got diversified weapons on this team and in the backfield with you as well. What do you expect to see out of the Chargers offense next year in terms of trying to be one of the upper echelon highest scoring teams? Yeah, the that's a great point. I think that's one of the best things about our team is you have guys like Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler out of the backfield as well, and Jared Cook. And those are weapons that not a whole lot of teams are, are able to see. And, uh, to have four guys like that spread the field, it makes my job so much easier. And uh, when you pair that up with a, a great offensive line that has given me plenty of time to get the ball off, um, you know, I, I'm so honored to, to be a part of this team. Where do you guys sit right now, even heading into that offseason? Because you know it's really no offseason, especially for a quarterback like you. It's it's competitive, and that's the way you want it. And you wouldn't want it any other way. It, is you're constantly pushing yourself and making sure that you know you got to deal with the Kansas City Chiefs, the Las Vegas Raiders, and the Denver Broncos, and teams that you know have defenses and incredible offenses. And um, you know it, it is tough. It, it is kind of like an arms race to keep up with those guys. Uh, but it is fun, and it's a great opportunity for us. Let's pivot and talk about Super Bowl 56, if you don't mind. The quarterback matchup in this game, how do you see it? What does each guy do that's so special at your position? I think that's a great question. I think you take a look at their similarities, and, and you look at Joe Burrow and Matt, Matt Stafford. They're both competitors. They're winners. They find a way to win. And, um, you know, they've both gotten to this game their separate ways. Um, but to be able to watch them compete over the past couple of years, and uh, especially Matthew Stafford, who, you know, I, I watched back when he was at Georgia. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just looking for it a good game and I don't really have quite the prediction of, of who's going to win but uh, looking for some great quarterback play. Well, I, listen, I'm, I do this for a living and I don't know either yet. <laughs> no, no, yeah, exactly. Well, if, if you'd like to make a prediction, we're, we're happy to take it. I, I said the city of Los Angeles for hosting such a great, you know, <laughs> oh, I, think, I think they've done a great job. Uh, by the way, I, I noticed your hat right there. You're also joining us courtesy of Meta, formerly Facebook, Meta Quest 2. What, what, what is this? What are we talking about here? It's a whole new world. I know that. Yeah, so I'm really excited to partner up with Meta about the, the virtual reality headsets that they've been able to develop. And, um, you know, I got on the train a couple years ago, actually, and uh, you can play games, you can do some workouts, you can watch movies, hang out with friends uh, in virtual reality. And, and so there's a whole lot going on, but it's been a lot of fun. Well, we talked about it uh, right before we got into the conversation he was having with Scott Hansen and Steve Smith. Just how incredible Justin Herbert's first two seasons in the NFL have yeah. been, especially when you consider the circumstances in which he got his first start. Anthony Lynn was not anticipating playing Justin Herbert very much that season unless it got away from him. Instead, he puts together Rookie of the Year campaign. He's the starter in the Pro Bowl. And now the big question moving forward, Mike, is how can they just make the playoffs? You know, it came down to one game last year in Week 18. They couldn't punch that ticket. What about next year and what you see moving forward? Uh, they got to get better defensively. There's no question about it. And they got to get better against the run. Last year, uh, in games that they gave up 100 or more yards to their opponent on the ground, 12 of those games, that's too many, 5-7, and seven, held their opponent under 100, 4-1. and one. So it, it's, a, it's a personnel thing. They've got to get better up front. Uh, that's got to get better. Done enough tackling as they got themselves into the secondary there, but there's no question in my mind 
uh, that a defensive coach in Brandon Staley has to shore up this run defense if this team's going to be competitive. Yeah, it was, look, a lot of it was attrition. Uh, they lost Justin Jones in the first week and Jerry Tillery, just that's not the kind of defender that he is. He's probably better outside. Uh, they really kind of attacked him inside. Uh, you had a lot of attrition in the linebacking ranks with, with Drew Tranquil going down a little bit. Kenneth Murray was, I think a lot of it's scheme too. You know, just guys struggled to get comfortable in Brandon Staley's defense the first year that he showed up. Kenneth Murray never looked comfortable. Joey Bosa didn't look comfortable a lot of the time. So I think the hope is, is that in year two, uh, they can get a lot better. Their biggest issue, though, was the secondary. Uh, they, they lost Casey Hayward in free agency, and they just never quite found that big corner to play opposite Mike Davis, who went down a lot. It was a lot of it was injury. A lot of it was just uh, just kind of square peg round hole trying to make things fit um, that didn't quite work out. When Justin Jones came back, the run defense got a lot better. But look, they were giving up fours and fives on first and second down. And you're looking at third down and one, third down and two. They were the worst team in the league on third down. They were the worst team in the league against the run. That's got to get fixed if you're going to make a step into the playoffs. That defense is supposed to be one that gives you problems up front and creates mismatches and really keeps an offensive coordinator up at night trying to figure out how to make things work in the running game. That was not the Chargers no. that we saw. Square peg, round hole, whatever. You've got to get personnel that fits that specific scheme that yeah. he's trying to run. I mean, like Joey Bosa, Derwin James ought to keep offensive coordinators up at night. And for whatever reason, it just could not come together. We'll see if they can get it sorted out for next season. Somebody who got it sorted out last season, Mike Evans, Super Bowl champ, will join Super Bowl today. Next, talk about the future of the Bucks. Sands, Tom Brady. Back here on Super Bowl today, presented by Bud Light Seltzer. Nice view of LACMA, the Los Angeles Museum of Contemporary Art, I think is what it is, or Los Angeles County Museum of Art. It's one of those two, but it's fantastic. Been there many times. And a little bit earlier, Mike Evans, you see it right here, caught the final touchdown pass thrown by Tom Brady in his exceptional career, and he caught up on total access with our James Jones. The gold is gone. You caught his last touchdown pass. I know you had caught touchdown 602 and you threw it in the stance and was able to get it back. You know, I caught Aaron's 100, threw it in the stance. He wasn't able to get that one back. But you caught his last touchdown pass. We all know that no matter how great a receiver you are, you need a good quarterback to spin it. The GOAT is gone now. Who would you like to see Tampa go after? 
I mean, I, I trust the front office and the coaching staff. I mean, I don't know who is going to be. Your guess is as good as mine, who it's going to be. Um, but obviously, it's going to be some big shoes to fill. Uh, the greatest player of all time retiring. But, man, it was an unbelievable pleasure and honor to play with Tom Brady. I mean, best to ever do it. He will be missed for sure. What's some of the things that I know everybody always talks about Tom? We know his production on the field, but what's some of the stuff off the field that he does that just makes him the greatest of all time? What everybody already knows, man. He's the most prepared guy. He's, he's the most prepared for a job that you can be in any field, man. He's always prepared. He makes sure the offense is prepared, the offensive line, the skill guys, the defense. He just brings the best out of you, man. And, um, down-to-earth guy, super humble, and just the ultimate teammate, man. I mean, he's as great as advertised, and it's a reason why he's done what he's done. You know, we people talk receivers in the National Football League. Obviously, I'm a big fan of yours, but sometimes they kind of forget about Mike. And, Mike, you just keep on thousand, 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 thousand. You know, what else you got to do to let the world know that, hey, I'm, I'm one of them top dogs, too. I'm the top guy in this National Football League as well. I'm gonna just keep being me, man. Just keep being consistent, you know, working hard every single year. Like, I'm blessed to be in this position uh, it's for people to be talking about me at all. I mean, my opinion, I, that, I hold myself to a higher standard than anybody ever could. So, you know, it's, it's cool to just be, you know, in the conversation. Um, I'm just gonna keep doing my thing. You know, God willing, I just stay healthy and can keep uh, extending that record and keep winning ball games. Now, I see that planners behind you. Talk to me. What you got going on with Planners? I got to ask everybody this question, man. Planners brought me in to promote the best peanut brand in the land. And I got to ask, how do you eat your mixed nuts? <laughs> do you handful or <laughs> like me? I'm one at a time. I got the pistachios first, then the almonds, mm. followed by the rest. Yeah, no, see, I'm just handful, scoop, and let's go. You know what I mean? Let's, <laughs> you know, pop. Pop a ball in there. Last question, man. We here. We got Bengals. We got Rams. Obviously, you had, you know, you played the Rams. You had some battles with the Rams. You was able to watch the offense, Cooper Cup and all that, go up against Jalen Ramsey and them boys. Obviously, it's JoJo Burrow, Jamar Chase on the other side. Who you got, man? Why? I mean, I got friends and, and guys that I'm a fan of on both sides of the, uh, you know, the teams. But I'll give the slight edge to the Rams because of their pass rush. Uh, but if the Bengals can slow down that pass rush and their defense can get some stops early against the Rams, then they'll definitely have a chance. But right now, I'm giving a slight edge to the Rams. The de their defense is, is really great, and, that, and that, that pass rush is elite. All right, well, Mike Evans said it. Time for us to say it louder. Presented by Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda. There's something you want to address quickly, though, I, before I gotta, you get to your prediction. Yeah, I have a mixed nuts uh, eating method as well. I mean, you, okay, you, let's got, hear it. you got the, the almonds... Uh, and then you got the cashews that are creamy, so you got to kind of alternate back and forth. If you throw them all together uh, in your hand like an can't animal, appreciate it. You're, no, you can't appreciate what it. What is your That's favorite nut a in a can of mixed nuts? That's not how a gentleman eats his mixed nuts. My favorite nut is the cashew because that comes in and that's like the uppercut, right? And it's right. shaped like an uppercut, right? Oh, so look at that. The, and then when I eat the almond, I actually bite the the sides of the almond to split it in half in my mouth, and then uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I think we should probably move on uh, and put uh, the bucket hat on. Uh, you know, we're in California. We're the world's leading producer of almonds. It sucks up 70% of our potable water, so, you know. Yeah, but it is still better for the earth than traditional milk. So I still go almond milk in my coffee for uh, okay. dietary reasons and otherwise. That now But you know how us. I really like my mixed nuts? With a Bud Light uh, seltzer, a uh, classic Bud Light seltzer cola. hard soda. Can I have a classic color? Are we Not yet? Not yet. So close, man. Not yet, but we're close because we need your Say It Louder Super Bowl prediction. All right. Uh, I Here came into this week or this two-week period. We have the sound effects for the Bud Light Seltzer, but we don't I have, have a drum. We don't have a drum, she have can a do drum a nice roll. roll. She can play know, the drums. I, I saw that on her IG roll. yesterday. Um, I weirdo came into this two-week. What a weirdo. I came into this two-week period. <laughs> <laughs> that we've been together for three days. <laughs> Apparently, we've reached our breaking point. We have. Uh, I came into this two-week period. You keep quiet. <laughs> You're going to get yours. 
<laughs> saying that the Bengals are going to be this nice story, and we'll see you again down the line, but you're not going to win this game. And I've convinced myself the Bengals are going to win oh, this yeah. game. And I'm going to say it louder because that's the segment that we're doing here. Bring those sound effects. Have a tiger roaring, babies. Uh, basically, if we have this. Uh, I, I, and I think, are we doing MVP yet, or am I doing? Why not? Yeah, do it. Joe Burrow is going to be my MVP, and he's wow. going to be sitting on a couch. And Glad he's you didn't hold us out, out on that one. There's the B-roll that I asked for right there. Just watch that baby right there. You know, somebody the other day, Rivals or one of those high school accounts, posted a press conference of Joe Burrow when he lost the state title. The last time he lost a playoff game, he was in high school. He called it the worst day of his life. And they said, what are you going to be thinking about when you go home? He said, I'm going to be thinking about the pick, I think he said, because he threw an interception, even though he threw six touchdowns. Joe, that was the worst day of your life, and I know you're still thinking about it, and you're going to be thinking about it on Sunday. It's going to motivate you to make it the best day of your life. Congratulations, Joe Burrow. You just won the Super Bowl. Well, I or I jinxed you, one or the other. I, I don't know if say it louder means. I'm supposed to say it louder, but it's That's not. What I, did. I, I can't top that. I mean, there was great uh, aggressiveness, great energy from that delivery. Mike Garofolo, I'm with you on the Bengals. I, we talked about the defense and how underrated, wildly underrated it has been. I hear the popping of the Celtics. You keep quiet. I'm doing my big prediction right now, and I'm coming for you <laughs> in just a second. I talked about it all week, and I believe I, this is not just a, I'm not just doing this for the show, okay? I'm not doing this to gain traction on social media. I believe in Evan McPherson. I believe in drafting kickers. I believe in special teams. I believe there are three phases to the game, and one is routinely ignored. He is 12 for 12 in the playoffs. He banged a 54-yarder against Tennessee, and as he walked on the field, he said, well, I guess we're going to the AFC Championship. That's Money Mac, Evan McPherson. He's going to break the record for most field goals in a postseason, his rookie year. Take that away from Adam Vinatieri. And he's going to do it as a rookie, and he's going to be the MVP. He's Bo! going to be. You ready? 22-14, that's five field goals, one <laughs> touchdown, the two touchdowns in favor of the Bengals. And one of – I call games for the Chargers uh, at SoFi Stadium. I have seen the most incredible kicks from 55, from 58, that look like they are good from 70. I am not exaggerating. Harrison Butker in 2020 kicked a 58-yarder to put it into overtime and a 58-yarder in overtime that split the uprights with 10 yards to go. I can see long field goals being the difference in this game. Give it to me. It's good. Oh, yeah. 6,000 to one. Was it 6,000 to one? 6,000 to one. Is, is that what the odds were for McPherson? That's what the odds are. You're going That's cola. By a, I'm going cola. That by a lot of Bud Light you know hard You have sodas. inspired me with your mixed nut approach. So I am going to take the mixed nut approach here, <laughs> you know, because you like to go, what was it, almonds first? Almonds first. So uh, let's cash you with the, with the end cheers. What a week from our friends it's at Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda. I'm going to go citrus first. Oh, that's tremendous. That's, that's tasty. Oh, that is. Then I'm going to go cherry cola. There's a cherry cola? Mm -hmm. Give me this. Oh, now that. Now that's something there. And as Here's a child. sound effect. Look at that. Parker, you want one? The uh, hit me. Hit it. You got it. Come, Come on. on. Ready? Hey! Oh, 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 you should have seen uh, that award. catch. Oh, my goodness. Oh, she may have torn her MCL, though. Fantastic. Oh, I took too big of a sip. Rule number one again, drinking and eating on, on a show. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Bud Light. The Super Bowl today presented by the new Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda with the Papa Soda offering four classic soda flavors, the loudest flavors ever. Shout out to Kleiman and Heitham and Tanton and Parker and everybody that has helped us out all week. You, the viewers, thank you so much for tuning in. Mike Garofolo, Matt Money Smith, thanks for watching. I'm going to drink more of that.